Karen Berniston, and today we're going to talk about Pop and Cuts, the base A2 card kit that is your first purchase to get into your Pop and Cuts system. Now you might be thinking as I take this insert out and look at just the base itself that, wow, this kind of resembles something I already have. I purchased a Movers and Shapers A2 card kit and it looks like this and it has some of that magnetic plate. In fact, it came with a little shape. Is that the same thing? Not exactly. Let me put them side by side so you can see the difference. The main difference between the Pop and Cuts A2 base and a Movers and Shapers is the position and size of the opening. The Movers and Shapers base only has half the opening and it's just not a large enough opening to fit a Pop and Cuts insert. And with a Pop and Cuts insert, you want that image to be near the center of the card as you see there in the Pop and Cuts space, and that wouldn't be possible with the Movers and Shapers base. But here's some good news. You will be able to use your Pop and Cuts base as a Movers and Shapers base. So I can put those decorative pieces in there, or I can put in my Pop and Cuts inserts to cut pop-ups. So here's how that kit looks when you cut it. You've got that circle label. It's an A2 sized card. But let's say you want to use your pop and cut just as a platform to animate something larger and in that case you need to have a larger card to hold it. So here I'm going to show you a technique for being able to get your pop and cut cut into a larger sized card. You'll still get that totally integrated look with your background paper. And to do that I'm going to turn to the base tray. Pop and Cuts inserts are the same height as movers and shapers shapes. So that means since they fit on the base tray you can cut them on the base tray. So let's make a card. Now I fell in love with this Bow Bunny Enchanted collection in the store and I think this paper here has a great section down here to be my integrated pop and cut card and you'll see some of the other papers and then I also found, lucky me, this great piece of clock paper from Teresa Collins and I just knew that that TikTok clock was going to fit on one of them. So I die cut my clock, did a little bit of embossing and distressing, put that paper behind it, used a decorative brad in the center and now I'm ready for my card. My paper for my interior card is five and a half by 11. I'm gonna use the edge of the tray to keep my pop and cut straight. And then I'm gonna slide it down just a little bit so that that pop and cut shape is gonna be behind my clock when my card is finished. Now, one thing about using the base tray is that it's not gonna cut your outer card for you. So first I need to locate the center, but I don't wanna fold all the way across. Then I'm just gonna line up that little center of my card with my tick mark in the center of my pop and cut. So I have to do this manually, but I am gonna be able to cut a larger card this way. Now you always need cutting plates, and so I'll just use my regular size plates because I just need to cover the cutting area itself. So I'll make my sandwich around my tray, and then I'm gonna roll that right through my Big Shot machine. So this tray is gonna fit in either the Big Shot or the Vagabond machine, and then once it comes out, the only thing that's been cut and scored is the pop and cut itself. And you can see it there kind of integrated into that background paper. Folding a pop and cut is so easy. Trace those cuts to the end. There's a long fold there, brings the shelf forward. Wherever it touches the image, it folds down. Wherever it touches the card, it pulls forward. And then you're going to give it a little press. And now let's take a look. I did pretty well. I almost got it perfectly centered. But luckily, since that's meant to be a card insert, it doesn't really matter that those ends don't line up perfectly. So let me turn it around the right way and you can see now what I've created and how that is going to be a perfect platform to hold my little decorative clock. I'll add some tape runner to the top of my pop and cut platform and then I'll just stick my clock to it. Let's look inside the card now. I added a little greeting, love you much, stamped it right inside that little label opening. And then now I'm ready to put on my backing card. Since this is integrated, there is a hole, so I'm gonna need a backing card. I've cut a six by 12 piece of dotted Swiss cardstock and then just folded it in half. Now, look how nice that pop and cut insert is going to look inside that card. It's just gonna give me that black edge all the way around. And like I say, it really doesn't matter that the ends weren't perfectly lined up. I only need a tape runner to put this in. Just avoid your pop-up, go around everywhere on one side, get it lined up in the fold, However, it's easiest to do that. Once you have one side in, then just do the same on the other side. All right, let's talk some decoration. Let's look back at my inspiration card. And on this one, I had those little flourishes inside attached to the clock. And those were made with the Thanks Sizzlet set, that little damask piece that's on the front. 
I think I'll cut a couple of those damasks to use on my new card. And you'll see the sizzlet right there. It comes out as a single piece. I'll just use some of my leftover dotted Swiss cardstock, cover the die, and I'll use tab one since I'm doing a sizzlet that's thinner. I still need my cutting plates to make my sandwich. Once my damask comes out of the big shot, then I'll take my scissors to chop it into four pieces. I want those little side flourish areas, but I had to point out, I love that leftover piece. It looks just like a little pine cone, and I'm going to be cutting that out of brown and using it. I finished up the card interior with those little damask pieces. I put one up on the clock on the right hand side and then put a couple over on the left hand side. And I found this little chipboard number 16 and since I've been married 16 years I thought that would be just perfect inside my card. Now let's do the front. The paper square is really perfect so I might just need a little bit of embellishing and I just went stash diving to find a few things that might work including this little heart shaped charm and I'm going to sink these little watch parts inside using some glossy accents. Look how pretty that is. Let's put this front together now. I really like these Karen Foster pins. Before I put it through the paper, I need to get one of my charms on. I'll put the little heart with the watch parts on first. Then I'll take the pin right through a couple holes I've already pierced in the top of my paper. And then that just slides through. And then before I return the little decorative end, then I just need to get my other charm on. And then that just pushes right over the top of the pin and locks everything into place as well as provides those little decorative finials on the end. Little adhesive and my card is done. Look for Pop and Cuts wherever Sizzix products are sold starting in spring 2012. And if you need more pop-up ideas and information, you can always visit my blog, karenberniston.typepad.com. Thanks for watching.